solving and managing the crisis, not solving the crisis. They wanted the crisis okay. to continue. All right, I'm going to take a break, but when we come back, I wanted to look more closely at India's foreign policy and, uh, and whether or not India should take a stronger position on such issues. There was a muted statement at first from the Ministry of External Affairs that changed a couple of days later. Uh, does India, though, now need to change the way it looks at the rest of the world? That's after the break. Welcome back. You're watching this special edition of Left, Right and Center on Egypt and the crisis uh, in the Middle East as we speak. Well, in this section, we're going to take a closer look at India's response to this crisis and in general uh, to any crisis in the world. Uh, does India have a tendency to sit on the fence when it comes to these situations? Is it time for India, particularly at, as it heads the UN Security Council, to take a stronger view on this? And Mr. Ayer, I'd like to ask you that first. You know, we saw initially a very kind of shall I say, blah statement from the Ministry of External Affairs uh, when this crisis first broke out. Uh, that was changed a couple of days uh, later, perhaps uh, uh, coincidentally on the day that Ambassador Gare Khan's uh, rather critical piece on that appeared in one of the lead leading newspapers. But do you feel uh, that, that India needs to change the way it uh, deals with these things? Well, India seems to have completely ignored Republican Arabia and if there is any attention at all being paid to West Asia, it is to the monarchies, to Saudi Arabia, to Oman, to the United Arab Emirates. But these other Republican countries, which figured so largely in our foreign policy till at least the end of the 1980s, whether it was Iraq or Jordan or Syria or, or Egypt uh, or in North Africa, Algeria, and we had also extended it a little into the non-Arab world of what the West calls the Middle East, namely Turkey. Suddenly, all that just vanished from the screen. And on the issue of Palestine, where we used to champion their cause, went completely possum. And the Goldstone Report came, uh, in which the comparison was made between the atrocities inflicted by state terror on the part of Israel on the people of Gaza and uh, uh, the damage caused by non-state actors on behalf of Hamas. And uh, when I asked the question on this, I was first told that this is confidential, our reaction to which was worse. And then subsequently, they answered part A but refused to answer part B. So effectively, what we tried to do was to blank West Asia, or at least Republican West Asia, out of our minds. So why, I'm why not surprised happened, that though? when this... Why, why do you think that's happened? Think Is it because, because of our uh, growing think, closeness with Israel and the United States in the last few years? Yes. Yes, absolutely yes. And, uh, and therefore, there was an attempt to dovetail our own West Asian North African policy to the United States' Middle East policy. And in the meanwhile, Israel had taken advantage of its, of the opening we provided them, to become just about our principal uh, defense supplier. And uh, the, the links between India and Israel have grown exponentially and often at the cost of our relationship with the Palestinian people. Uh, the net result is that where we used to be a really significant player in West Asia, we cease to be that. And not because the West Asians don't want us, but because we cease to be interested in them. And we feel that it may be in our larger national interest to simply you know, be a camp follower of whatever the United States of America is doing there. Okay. And I think it's a great pity. I think it's a great pity and maybe this opportunity where in a sense we've been compelled to raise our voice progressively will enable us to get back to having an activist West Asian policy instead of thinking that if we look east, we can perhaps afford to stop looking west. Sopan, you wanted to say something? Yes, I mean, Mani has been very consistent in, in his espousal of her, what his version of an activist foreign policy in West Asia. Now, the problem with Indian foreign policy is that it's based on two things. One is, it's excessively reliant 
on what it calls its principles. Principles which it borrowed somewhat uncritically from the Nehruvian times, which is, one of which is a noble principle of national sovereignty, which is that we normally don't interfere in the internal affairs or comment on the internal affairs of, of anybody, Africa. which includes Myanmar, which includes Egypt, which includes Syria, which includes Jordan. That's the first thing. The second one, which I think we are sometimes somewhat uh, hesitant to admit, is that our foreign policy depends also on our own interests. And at present, our interests, our links with Israel is very, very profound. And that's not something which I, on my part, or anyone in India, should be apologetic about. That is not to say that there, there are no significant links with the Arab world, that there is no significant Indian interest. There is in the Gulf states... You're saying we, we have to be practical. We have where to are? be absolutely practical. There are major disputes going on in West Asia. Our ability to control those disputes is nominal, poking our nose into every single dispute, making moral, grandstanding and making moral positions on them does not serve us. Okay, We've been doing that a bit too often in the United Nations without any commensurate, without any form of reciprocity from some of those states which you... Mr. Ayer, a quick, a quick response from you on that because Swapan obviously feels that we have to be very practical with our foreign policy but as the world's largest democracy, uh, and now that we are, uh, you know, uh, heading the Security Council, d do we not take a moral position on some things? We do take a moral position, and that's the moral position we had on, on Palestine. And apparently, Chopin seems to think that that's an impractical thing to do. You know, pragmatism without principle amounts to opportunism. And you become then a boat on the high seas that is just thrown from one wave to the other. And that has been happening with us in West Asia and I would much rather go back to the principled position of Mahatma Gandhi of which I am proud but perhaps Chopin isn't and that's perhaps because I'm a follower of Gandhiji while he's a follower of Sibir Sabarkar that in Palestine belongs to the Palestinians even as England belongs to the English and France to the French. And now I India's think we should be asserting interest. this principle. Ambassador I think it is in India's interest to be a moral force. I do not think it is in India's interest to think that getting loads of guns from Israel is more important than having a principled and moral position on an issue which is critical to peace and tranquility in West Asia. Morality cuts both ways, money. Your morality may not be necessarily shared by everyone. Those who support <clears throat> Those who are the firm commitment to Holocaust denial, to my mind, are completely immoral. No, but I let no, me. I, 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 I just like I, Ambassador I, Gari Khan to step in for a moment. I, I, the Holocaust was in the past. The discrimination against the Palestinians is in the present. Okay, Ambassador. Yeah. No, I think we are now engaging in a very broader discussion. Uh, we hmm. are forgetting about what is going on in Egypt now. Uh, so you want me to address the broader I, I question? To, I want to know whether you feel that yeah. India needs to take a stronger position on, on such issues. Yeah, I think, we well, first, Liz, I think there is a certain contradiction in Mr. Dasgupta's views as, as just propounded by him. Because on the one hand he says that uh, we should, uh, you know, that we, are, we attach too much importance to this non-interference, that we are stuck by this Nehruvian thing. On the other hand, he wants us to also opine or, or take a position on what is going on in Egypt, for example. He doesn't want us to no, keep quiet on Egypt. That. That. No, you didn't say I, that. I didn't say that. But there, there is a certain, I think... Civil society I can take a position. Course. The yeah. state is different. No, anyway. My, I think what we are now doing in Egypt is a happy mixture of pragmatism, principle, and national interest. We are not interfering in Egypt's internal affairs at all. What we are saying and I think I must say that I was myself very disappointed at the first the silence and the initial two statements issued by the Minister of External Affairs. You were disappointed? I was very disappointed because that, rather they should have kept quiet than make those kind of statements. But now eventually I think they have made the right amount of noise, right sort of noise. The Foreign Minister has gone on, on the air and said that we are fully with the people of Egypt. With, any solution must satisfy the aspirations of the people of Egypt. He went even further than what 
I had suggested, now he has said that the writing is clearly on the wall and the people there like Mubarak should see the writing on the wall. So I think this is a good thing for India to have done because it is not, we are not interfering in uh, Egypt's internal affairs. So you're saying but this will also serve us, okay. no, this will serve our national interest because Mubar Mubarak is history and the next government which comes to power will know that Egypt was with the people of uh, India, India was with, with the people of Egypt. Okay, I just have another no, question. Let, 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 let so me, it was self-interest rather than let principle. Me. No, yes, I say, they, yes. no, they, no, no, no. The two combined here. You know, because if we take, no, no, if, if sorry, we take sorry. the principles, then, no. then the next no. time China blocks Twitter, we, no, no, we no, should, no, forget we, about we China. should make a, uh, here we should make a bold statement. Here, principle of non-interference and, and our national interest. I think there is a misconception here. Like I would like to add one point quick, because yes. this repeatedly comes in the t discussion that India is sidelining with the Arab or the pro-Palestinian. Uh, that's not an issue. India is siding with the justice. As much as the Jewish has suffered in the Holocaust, the, Egypt, the, 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 Israel, the Jewish, they have the right to survive. Similar things is the Palestinian have the right to survive.